Welcome to Geometry Pre AP. Before you start doing these proof notes, I would suggest you have your postulate and theorem sheet out and you go back and pull your video notes from 2.5, 2.6 uh, proofs. I gave you the building blocks of most all these proofs back at that point. Uh, you might want to also have your parallel line proofs out to, to look at also to just see some of the processes. It might help you when we're doing these. We're only going to have three examples. Okay. So this is a list of everything we've learned that we can use in a proof at this point. Um, these are all our postulates and theorems. Uh, we don't tend to use many of these. So if I took my pen and let's see here. We don't tend to use this one much in the proofs that we do. We don't tend to use this one much in the proofs we do. Or this one or this one. Um, well, we don't know. We don't really need to use that one. Um, we're not really using, uh, let's see here. No, we don't tend to use, yeah, that's about it. And we use pretty much everything else, so. You need to know all these. You need to be able to say what each one stands for and what they mean. And if you don't, that's where we're going to have a problem. Now, I'm going to teach you this one right here on the third video. So if you want to write those down, you can. You should have those on flashcards by now. All right, so here's our first proof. Just like we did in previous notes, we want to mark the given information to our proof. So if you want to pause the video, mark the given information in proof, then we'll talk about this proof. All right, so we go in and mark this information. This is congruent to this. So we got x, y is congruent to x, w. We got y, z is congruent to w, z. All right. And so since I have those pieces of information, can I add anything else in? Well, I'm going to put another color in here, and I'm going to say, yeah, I can add the reflexive property in. So do I have enough information to prove this triangle is congruent to this triangle? And I'm going to look here, and I say, well, I've got a side and a side here. I've got another side and another side here. And I've got a side for this triangle and a side for this triangle. So I would say by side, 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 I have enough information for these triangles. Right. And that's our proof. So we start off. We got x, y is congruent to y, z. Or x, y is congruent to x, w. Okay. And so then our next one. Uh, the reason for that would be given. All right. Our next one would be that we have. Oops, that's not a very good error. All right. Y Z is congruent to W Z. That would be given again. All right. Then we said we had to use the reflexive property, so I'll bring that one in. So I bring this one, and that was the reflexive property. And so I have the side here, a side here, and a side here, and so they all come together. Because remember we said it takes three pieces of information for the shortcut, and that proves that the two triangles can it. And my reason is going to be side, side, side. So those proofs from 2.5, 2.6, the little small parts will help us when we're using like segment bisector, angle bisector, uh, midpoint, vertical angles, linear pairs, and things like that in our proofs. All right, so here's our next one. Pause the video, write the given and prove, draw the picture, mark all the given information to the proof, and then see if you can figure out what are you going to use to make these two triangles congruent. Which of those five theorems are going to work? Okay, so T is the midpoint of SW. So if T is the midpoint of SW, I'm going to put this information in this. So these are congruent here and here. Then it says SR is parallel to WX. Well, if I have parallel lines, remember I have special pairs. So wouldn't that mean that I have this angle is congruent to this one? That would be alternate interior angles. And I'd have this one congruent to this one. OK. So if I have this information, I can go back and list this. This would be a side. This would be an angle and an angle here. And then I'd have another angle 
in another angle. And since that side wasn't created by an angle, these two triangles are created by an angle, angle, side. So I know what I need to do. I'm going to have to have two angles and a side come together at the end to prove the triangle is congruent. So let's start off with the first piece of given information. And that is SR is parallel to XY or WX. I always want to say XY. So that's given information. Okay, and remember we marked those, the green angle and the blue angle uh, congruent. So that means we would have this one and this one congruent. Now this time we have two pieces of information coming from one given because there are two sets of angles that are truly congruent. And so this Rx and uh, R and X are congruent by alternate interior angles theorem. And S and W are also alternate interior angles theorem. And so I've got my blue angle, my green angle. All right, and so now we need to pick up on that other piece of information. So we had T as the midpoint of SW. So now, I'm going to bring that in. T is the midpoint of SW. What does a midpoint do? Create those two congruent pieces. And so then I can say ST and WT are congruent. Now this was given information again. And this is by definition. Of midpoint. Remember, definition of midpoint creates two congruent pieces. And so now I have my angle, my angle, and my side. And so they can come together at the end. I can bring this one, and this one, and this one. i got to bring three things, remember, because these are shortcuts. Three pairs. And so that was angle, angle, side. And there's that proof. So always mark your given information in the picture. See what else you can add in there and prove. Now, could you have done the vertical angles? Yes. It would have taken more steps to do the vertical angles. You would have added probably another step in, maybe two. And you would have proved it congruent by angle, side, angle. It is possible. Sometimes things can be proved more than one way. All right. Here's our last proof. So pause video. Write this proof down. Write the given, the proof. The picture, plug the information into the picture, and see if you can prove, figure out which of the five ways you're going to use to prove these triangles can run. By the way, when you have a proof, there's always one of the five ways that can work. You just got to figure out which one. All right, so AD bisects EC. So AD bisects EC, that means this is the midpoint for this whole piece here, which means this and this are going to be congruent. B is the midpoint for AD, and so this one is congruent to this one. Okay, that's all it gives me. But I do have some vertical angles in here, so I can put those in here. And so then this is my angle. This is my side and my side, and I got another corresponding side here and here. And since that angle is created by those two congruent sides, I have a side angle side proof. That's what I got to prove it. That's going to be my reason at the end. So let's deal with the first given. Okay, so the first given. Uh, if you go back and remember what we did in the past, that uh, when we had this as a given, all right, what does a bisector do? A bisector told us where the midpoint was, and so therefore I have a midpoint. So this was given. This is definition of a segment bisector. Go back and look at the chapter 2.5 proofs. That's what's listed in there just like this. And so then there's a progression. After you know where the midpoint is, you can do what the midpoint does, which is creates two congruent pieces. Okay, so this is definition of midpoint. Okay, so that's progression of that blue part. So that's blue parts done. So let's go to another part here. Okay, let's go do that other given. B is the midpoint of AD. All right, and so that was given. And again, just like I said over here, if we got a midpoint, then we create two congruent segments. And so I've got the two congruent segments there. This is by definition of a midpoint. All right. Oh, it keeps wanting to do that. There we go. Bit point. 
All right, and then we have that green vertical angle. Now remember, in order to use vertical angles, you first have to. Oops, I didn't mean to use the pen there. I have to say that they're vertical angles. So that was my first step in this, and that is that angle ABE and DBC are vertical angles. Order matters. Pay attention to that. And this is the definition of vertical angles. And so therefore, if I know they're vertical angles, then I know they're congruent because that's a theorem that I have. So vertical angles are congruent. So vertical angles, congruence theorem, I think it is. Congruence theorem, all right. So I have my two sides of my angle. In this case, I actually put the angle in the middle. It's nice, it doesn't have to be there. So all three of these come together so that I can say my two triangles congruent by side angle side. And that's the end of that proof. And that is my last proof for this one. You'll be doing different versions of this. So like I told you, put the given information in. See which of those four things that we said we can add in so that we can make the triangles congruent. And then put our reason up there. And then finish the proof. These little steps just keep getting repeated over and over and over again. All right, and that's the end of our lesson.